Hey everybody, I hope you're having a great, great day. Maybe you're a person who's been part of Dulos for a long time and has kind of wondered what's going on there? Who, who are the people who God's called to serve, um, to be part of what God's doing down there? Or maybe you're thinking about maybe serving or learning more about what it's like to be a missionary down here at Dulos. Uh, well, you are watching the right video. My name's Andy and I get to be the communications director down here. And I'm here with my friend Elizabeth, who has started um, teaching down here this year. And we're just gonna kind of talk through her story. She's gonna share her story with you of how she found out about Dulos, how God called her here, the fundraising, the transition, and all of that. So that for those of you who love Dulos and have been here for a while, can just meet this wonderful person that I get to hang out with here and there. And for the rest of you, you can maybe see what it's like. As you can see, we are in the middle of Dulos with all the noise and the students and all of that. I thought there'd be no better place for us to talk about Dulos than sitting right in the middle of it. So I'm excited. Thank you for being here on the Dulos campus with us to meet Miss Elizabeth. So let's just start way, way back. Um, before you kind of knew Dulos existed, really quick, just how did you discover Dulos? How did you kind of connect to the needs here? Stuff like that. Yeah. A little history of who you are. Sure. All that. So the way I found out about Dulos was kind of random. I was at college at Taylor in Indiana, and I was going into my senior year and thinking about where I was going to student teach. And Taylor likes to send students abroad for student teaching as much as possible. And so I was looking at a bunch of like different international schools, and the options that I had looked at were falling through um, because of COVID and they just couldn't take me anymore. And so it was kind of last minute. I had like a month before I had to leave and they were like looking for another school to connect me with and they found Dulos mm. and Dulos was willing to take me. And so I was like, okay, I'll go. And I remember thinking like, I wonder why God is opening like only this door for me to come. And I ended up coming and fell in love with it when I was here. That's so cool. You know, you're not, it's awesome because you're not the first person who I've heard got, like say like, God, God closed every door but this one. Yeah. And so I walked into it. And that's that's really great. It is. So when you first found out about Dulos, like how did you know God was calling you here? Yeah. So I think I, I only knew that after being here mm. for a while. It's yeah. so like when I came here to start student teaching, after a few weeks, I was just like so amazed by what I saw here, mm. by the way that I saw the students and the staff interacting, and just like the culture and the community here. Yeah. Um, I could really see it as a place that I wanted to invest in and be a part of. Um, and as I prayed about it and talked to the other staff about their experiences, I just felt more like at peace about like this is where God wanted me to be for my next step. That's awesome. So you start thinking, oh my gosh, it's. Dulos is probably my next step. Um, were there any barriers before you like said yes? Like how did your family feel or think about it? Was fundraising intimidating? Like, mm -hmm. Were there any barriers between like kind of the job offer and saying yes and, and going for it? Yeah, yeah, I definitely was worried about fundraising and just about my family, like how they would feel and me being away. Mm. And for my family part at least, like I asked for my parents' input and like care about it. And both of them are believers and so they've always been like supportive of missions and like excited about that. Yeah. Um, but still like having their daughter so far away in another country is kind of a big thing. Yeah. Um, but I remember calling my mom when I was here and like trying to make that final decision. And she just was like, Elizabeth, like if you don't go, it'll be a mistake because mm. I can see like all the ways God has prepared you for this and like just how much you've loved it. And, how he's planted seeds along the way. Mm. Um, so that was a big confirmation for me that like, yes, this was where God wanted me to be. Yeah. Um, it's something I'd been praying for. That's important. Yeah, yeah. it is. And tell me about fundraising. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. It was really scary. Was it? Until I was like halfway through and then I was like, okay, actually it's not that bad. Yeah? yeah. What, did it, what did it look like for you? Like what did you have to like do? What did it yeah. actually like, look like? Yeah, so I did a couple of like in person, just like meet up with people, talk to them about the school, show them some pictures, explain like what the mission of Dulos was, mm -hmm. and then ask them to support me. Yeah. Um, and, and then I, sorry, who yeah. were like who were these people? Like strangers you've never met, people who have known and loved you for years, like One of them. elders from your church. Like yeah, yeah, who, yeah. who exactly are these people? Because I think that can get scary. It's like I have to ring some random person's doorbell <laughs> and ask him for a hundred dollars a month. No, <laughs> I did not ring any random doorbells. What? <laughs> no. <laughs> I only reached out to people that I knew, yeah. but that was like so many good responses from that. Like I reached out to a lot of my aunts and uncles, um, my classmates in college, um, some of my 
like roommates, parents even wanted to be involved. Nice. Um, yeah, so just like friends and families, people from church. Yeah. I did a little presentation at church to like share with the people who had seen me grow up. Yeah. Um, and just like tell them about what Doulas was like and yeah. what my student teaching was like. Yeah. And a lot of them wanted to come on board and support. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Like I know this video is supposed to be like positive and stuff, but like were there hard moments? Like were there moments where it's like, oh man, like that just got weird or that just got hard. like, oh, I don't. <laughs> like. Yeah, I remember the first person I talked to for support raising it was like a, a zoom call uh -huh. and I just like the conversation kept going and I was like I know I should like actually ask her to join my support <laughs> team but I just couldn't get the words out and so I just kept telling her about the school and eventually she was like so how can I support you nice. and I didn't even have to ask the question but I just felt so like it was so hard at first yeah. but after the first call like, it got better nice. so like all of the struggle was in you it wasn't actually in like people slamming the door on your yeah. face and be like, I will never talk to you again, no. Elizabeth. Everyone was supportive. And yeah. even if they like only wanted to join like by praying for me or something, yeah. like no one was like, how dare you ask me? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was all really good. Awesome. So were you able to get fully funded? Mm -hmm. Wow. Congratulations. Thank you. That's awesome. And that's that's really common. Like a couple emails, a couple meetings. Mm -hmm. It's like, holy cow. Like God yeah. brings, with God's calling, he does provide that provision, mm -hmm. which is so cool. So you've got your funding in place, your mama says you can go. Yep. Um, what else was in the transition before you got on the plane and, and got here? Yeah, just like packing and trying to learn a little bit about the culture. I remember doing some research over the summer and trying to learn more about like traditions and practice Spanish, yeah. all that stuff. Check over the packing list to make sure it's ready to go. Yeah, and your yeah. Spanish is solid. Like you're, you landed with like Spanish Spanish, which okay. is awesome. Many people don't mm -hmm. and you don't have to. But um, tell, tell me about that Spanish part for you. Yeah. Well, I took Spanish like, throughout high school and then I minored in it in college. Oh, dang. Um, so I like love, I love languages. Yeah. Um, but I think I never actually had to use it much until I came here. And so once I started student teaching here and then when I came here back again as a teacher, yeah. like, I think working with the students definitely like upped my Spanish a lot and just like made me have to practice it in real life settings and like learn new words for a school setting. Yeah. Do you have many friends here, fellow teachers who don't speak Spanish? Mm -hmm. Like what's life like for them? What have you seen? Yeah, well, I think like there's some ways that they definitely like wish they, they knew more Spanish. Of course. Yeah, but I think being here, it's nice that it's like the school is bilingual and so the goal is for the students to learn English and so by them speaking in English they're really helping the students to grow um, but then also like Flavia teaches Spanish class yeah. and so they're able to grow like every week take a couple classes with her um, and grow on their own too. That's great. It's, it seems like there are so many ways that you can make a big kingdom difference without speaking like a word of Spanish yeah, for and sure. I love that about Duos mm -hmm. and then you can kind of catch up and connect along the way. Yeah, and everyone's so helpful, like they want to help. And everyone yeah. uses a little bit of English, a little bit of yeah, Spanish yeah. that they have to make those connections. That's very true. Yeah. Um, so you have some sort of a going away party, your mom and you are both <laughs> ugly crying, yeah. you get on a plane, and then you land here in Harubakoa. Now you'd been yep. here before. Yes. Um, but tell me about like those first, that first month, the first three months, like this isn't just uh, student teaching, this is life. Yeah. Here you are. Yeah. Tell me about that transition. I think the first few months were probably some of the most fun really? moments of my time here. Fun? Yeah, and wow. I know that's not everyone's that's story. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But like, I think I was expecting it to be really hard, like yeah. moving to a new country and like being away from my family. But at first it was like just so much support and so much love. Mm. Um, like the new staff training and connecting mm. with the other new staff who moved yeah. here. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, it yeah. was. And we like, we just did a bunch of cool activities to learn about the school and the culture and language and yeah. just spent all of our time getting to know the staff mm. and getting to know the school mm. and the culture. And so I really enjoyed those early on moments. Mm. Um, even though there were hard moments of like realizing, okay, I'm here for a long time and yeah. my family is not here. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'd say overall it was a really good few months. Yeah. Have you had a moment where you've hit the wall? Or when you hit like the, the valley or however you want yeah. to say it? Like everybody does. Like for it's sure. not it's not if, it's when. Mm -hmm. And it's not like yeah, and, and for how long. And yeah. like, I love it here because we have people who understand that and who can walk you through it, like mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But have you have you kind of hit that yet? Yeah, I think for me it's been more of like a few little valleys mm. rather than like one big like yeah. moment. Um, I think the moments like when I'm 
maybe like not feeling well or like when the semester is getting hard and my work feels a little bit overwhelming, like then I'm really like, wow, I miss home a lot. Or this is a hard transition. Um, and just remembering like all of those, those changes and remembering that I am far from what I'm used to. Um, but yeah, it's, it's good because even though the, like, there are a lot of like those little moments, um, they always go quickly, at least for me. And I also feel very supported by the community here. So I know that like I have good good people that are always like willing to pray for me and like reach out. And um, it seems like whenever those hard moments are happening, it's a matter of like a day before someone like texts me and like, how can I be praying for you? Or like, do you need anything? How are you doing? And yeah, it, it, it feels good to be supported. It does. Those hard things. It really does. Yeah. yeah. Um, You've mentioned a couple of times my community here, the community here. Like, tell tell us about your community here. What does it look like? Like, yeah. best friends, church. Sure. Like, what does the, a mentor like? What does your community look like here? Yeah. So I'm really thankful. I've connected a lot with the other teachers here, mm. um, especially the teachers who came in at this year with yeah. me as well. Yeah. Um, like your generation. My or generation. Like your, your your class of teachers. Yes. Yeah. The new <laughs> stuff. Whatever. Yeah. 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 But it's been really good, especially since we trained together. We connected a lot early on. Um, and then we spend a lot of time together on the weekends, just like working together or just hanging out, exploring the town, nice. stuff like that. Um, and then I do have a couple of mentors, um, just like other staff members who are here or like family of staff mm -hmm. who have reached out nice. um, and just been intentional about like getting to know me and checking in on me as I transition to the time here. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. What are, what are some of the things you've um, done here that have been like really helpful like dinner at somebody's house or going to the mountains or like how do you kind of recharge how do you feel grounded loved supported yeah. by the community here what are like your favorite activities mm. and with and your favorite people yeah I, I love all of the community time like mm. I don't keep saying community no it's great <laughs> it's all about community yeah yeah I think whenever people invite me over to their house like I just feel so loved by that like that they would be so hospitable and like want me to come over yeah. um, so like having dinner with other staff um, or like weekend excursions like going to the waterfall mm. I've had a couple really fun memories there like hiking um, and then just swimming and hanging out and talking with, with other staff nice tell me about Harabakoa like the town what are a couple adjectives you'd use to describe this this wonderful place yeah I would say it's it's very bright, <laughs> nice. like not just in like the like, lots of light, but like it's colorful, it's noisy, it's full of people, full of life. Um, there seems to be like always a lot of people, <laughs> people doing their, their lives, moving yeah. around, lots of action. Yeah, yeah, I love that. It's a bright. It is bright mm -hmm. for sure. I never thought of it that way. Yeah. So you you landed. You had a great kind of onboarding, getting it like developing your super best friends down here, um, people you'll probably stay connected with for the rest of your life, right? Yeah, that's um, right. Getting used to this bright town and, and all of that. Um, tell me about just the school itself, your experience of like the work of it, right? Mm -hmm. Like um, your team, how you work, um, what that's been like for you as a teacher, an yeah. elementary teacher. Yeah, I think it's a really great environment, especially as a first year teacher mm. to work here. Um, because of the amount of support and care that is given to the staff. Um, I'm thinking especially of Lori, who's like the elementary supervisor, mm -hmm. master teacher. Yeah. And we have like weekly check-in meetings. Um, she's just asking like how I'm doing personally and how my teaching is going. Like helps me set goals and then work towards those. Yeah. Um, so that's been really helpful in just making that transition and feeling supported in my first year of teaching. Nice. Yeah. And then the other teachers also have been great about reaching out and giving me ideas. Like Lisa, the kindergarten teacher, and then Anne, the other first grade teacher, have been so, so kind and always like sharing their resources with me, asking if I need any help or ideas like, for my classroom. Good. Yeah. Awesome. Um, this is a multicultural environment. Mm -hmm. um, talk to us about that part of it, like navigating cross-cultural ministry, cross-cultural education. You're working in first grade yeah. in an English immersion school. Um, just talk to us about that part of the work, that part of just life here. Yeah, I think it's one of the like best parts, but also most challenging parts of Dulos. Mm -hmm because it, it does stress you a lot. Like it makes you have to work a little bit harder to make connections. Um, and like 
reaching out to, to staff and students that don't speak English is challenging sometimes. It makes me like think a little bit harder and have to put a little more effort in. Um, but it's it's really beautiful at the same time because I love seeing those like the two cultures and languages like merge and how it forces us to help each other. Um, and so there's been a lot of moments where where I'm like talking to a student and they're trying to explain something to me in Spanish and I don't understand and then they'll like try to translate for each other and so it's cool like without that language the two languages like I wouldn't have moments like that like having to help each other and like help make understanding together yeah um, but also sometimes it's a little bit hard and I'm like I don't know that word like yeah but it's cool to help to help each other and teach each other yeah, yeah. and how does that play into life outside of Dubois for you yeah I would say like the biggest challenge maybe of of Spanish outside of Dubois is just like grocery shopping yeah. and like running errands um, that like if I have to stop at like the fruit stand or something right. sometimes I'm like I don't know what the name of this fruit is but yeah, yeah. I need it so I'll just point and yeah. then they'll tell me what it is but sometimes I'll yeah. get it wrong and I'll just buy the bananas anyway <laughs> you know it's like yeah. I, I wanted plantains but I'll just buy the bananas That's and so walk funny. away quickly no, like, I totally did that the other day no big deal <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah it's tricky Nice. But it's also kind of fun. Like it stretches you, makes me use Google Translate a lot more. Yeah. <laughs> but it always works out. It does. Everyone's really kind and understanding. So. They, they really are, and yeah. I love your your like in that brightness. Like there is this like no one has ever no no one in the community has ever made me feel like dumb mm -hmm. or stupid. Like everyone has always been pretty darn helpful. And yeah. like there's crabby people everywhere, but for the most part. It's been just like, wow, thank you. you yeah. Know, like, thanks for working with me and yes. where I'm at and what I got. <laughs> that reminds me of a time when I went to pick up a package mm -hmm. from like the mail yeah. business thing in town. And the guy who worked there spoke Spanish and English. Mm -hmm. And when I came in, he remembered that like I don't really speak Spanish that well. Mm -hmm. He's like, do you want me to speak in English or in Spanish? And I'm like, well, English is easier. He was like, but you need to practice Spanish. <laughs> so he spoke in simple Spanish. And I thought that was just so kind. Like he simplified it to help me. That's but he also was like, hey, you need to know Spanish to live here. And That's so it was like friend. a great, yeah, a really helpful and kind response. Wow. Yeah. Um, what are, have you had like a moment or two where it's like, wow, like this is like, this is what you were calling me to God. Mm. Like a moment with your students or a moment at a, at a chapel or just like kind of this moment where it's like, wow, like this is Dulos, this is my life here, like, wow, it's worth it. Yeah. Like, have you had any moments like that that you can share with us? Yeah, this is a little thing, but like almost every day at some point, my class will take a moment just to sing together. Mm. And they love to sing and they love to dance. And we have all of these songs that we do. Um, but I think whenever I see my class singing and dancing and just laughing and being together, that's a reminder to me like, okay, this is why I'm here. Like seeing that smile on their face, seeing the joy in this community, in my classroom of 17 little first graders and seeing like how we've all come together just to make music, to, to like be in the same place to learn together. Yeah. Like this is why I'm here, this is why God called me here. Yeah. And it's a really beautiful and joyful thing. Mm. Yeah. That's fantastic. That's really cool. So let's say that I that someone was thinking about maybe coming in to serve at Dulos. Like, what sort of advice would you give them? What sort of guidance to help them on their way? Yeah. Well, I mean, definitely the first thing is pray about it and also do your research. Mm -hmm. I would say, like, check out the Dulos website. Try to do, like, a call with maybe another staff member that's already here mm -hmm. or a visit if you can. Yeah. Um, but I think that for me at least, like seeing Duos in action and like experiencing it was what really drew me here. Yeah. And so if, if someone is thinking about it and able to get a little taste of that by doing like a call or like a video call even if like a class yeah. um, or coming to see it in person, yeah. I think that would be the best thing to learn about the school. Awesome. Awesome. Um, anything else that you want to say or share with, with the wonderful <laughs> Duos family? It's just an amazing place. It's a joyful place. It's a place of multiple cultures, community. Yeah, awesome. come check it out. Yeah, for sure. Thank you so much. Um, you. It's been such a blessing. I'm so grateful that you said yes yeah. to God's call, and I'm so glad that you're here. I'm part of the community. You've brought, like, God's light shines uniquely through you, mm -hmm. and you've shined that to your class and to us, and I'm just so grateful that you said yes, and you hugged your mom, and you came <laughs> down here, yeah. and you're doing it. So thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much for that. 
Um, if anybody would want to connect with Elizabeth and ask her questions, the best thing to do would just be to email our front office and then they can put you in touch. Um, so just info at doulosdiscovery.org. Um, we look forward to continuing a conversation with you. If God's tugging at your heart to come down and serve, um, I think Elizabeth gave good advice. Just take the next step. Start the conversation. Learn a little bit more about it. We'd love to, to meet you, to talk with you. God bless you all. Hope you have a great day.